Here's how I edited this epic black and white landscape scene with only a bit of Lightroom. If you want to follow along, follow the link in the description of the video to download the raw file. And now let's get started. Right away, let me tell you, I already have cropped the image just a bit, making it more like a panoramic version, taking a bit away from the top and the bottom, because those areas are not that important. Next up, let's expand the basic pedal. At the moment, we are still working with the color image, so let's change that by switching the treatment from color to black and white. This also changes the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Monochrome. And the next thing we can do is to work on the white balance. You might think since we're editing black and white, the white balance makes no difference, but you can actually push that slider around to affect the colors in a different way. So I want to look for a good balance between the highlights and the shadows, which I think is right about here. So we didn't actually need to change the white balance at all. But it's good to know you can affect black and white images this way as well. Okay, the most obvious thing we need to do is to adjust the exposure since we want to make it very, very dark and grim. So let's really bring down the exposure. I want to make it super dark until there are almost no details left, just like this. And from this point on, we can tweak the lights a little more. What I mean by that is I want to bring up the whites. And by doing this, we are creating a very good looking contrast. But of course, we can further tweak things. For example, we could bring down the shadows and even the blacks. Since looking at the histogram, you can see there is a little room left on the darker side. So that means we can bring down the blacks to introduce even more contrast. So I quite like how this is looking already. However, I also want to bring down the highlights. Now, at first, this will again reduce the contrast a little bit. But doing this, we will get back details in the brightest areas of the image, which we will later change with a lot of masking. So that's the reason for me to bring down the highlights. Then I want this shot to be sharp and clear. So that's the reason for me to bring up the texture. And I'm also going to raise the clarity. I'm going to raise it quite a lot since this will bring out a lot of details, especially in those areas right here where there is a little bit of fog lingering over the rock. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think I do want to bring down the dehaze, which will just kind of introduce some more artificial fog to the scene, just like that. Nice. And of course, since we are working with the black and white image, there is no vibrance or no saturation. So. We went from the basic raw image on the left to the edited base version on the right. Quite cool already, but let's do a little bit of masking to really make this shot look grim and dark. What I have in mind for this scene is to have an area which introduces light to the scene. And obviously that's on the left side, right here, coming in more towards the right side. And the rest of the image should be rather dark. So let's start this by applying a radial gradient, applying a linear gradient just there on the top. And I'm going to bring down the exposure, making this area darker. This is quite some heavy editing, but I think for this scene, it just looks really, really cool. So I also want to bring up the contrast, which will help make this area even darker. Actually, let's just pump up the contrast all the way. That looks great. And I also want to add another linear gradient for the foreground, maybe like this. And instead of dropping the exposure, I'm going to drop the highlights and I'm also going to drop the whites. And the reason for me to do that is if I would drop the exposure, we would end up with underexposure in those areas. I don't want that. And thus I'm dropping highlights and whites for a more subtle change. Now let's work on that light area. I'm going to use a radial gradient. Let's make it really big like this. And I'm going to rotate it slightly to fit the angle of the light. Now let's bring the center outside of the image and maybe increase the size even more. So I basically want to cover the whole bright spot on the left. And here, let's introduce glow. The simplest solution to do that is to just bring up the blacks, which as you can see, works really, really good. 
I do think we can make this overall a little brighter by bringing up the exposure. And let's also bring up the whites. This will introduce overexposure, as you can see looking at this gram, but since there aren't any details in here anyway, I don't think it matters. And that little bit of overexposure gives us some very nice contrast. All right, then let's also add a bit of negative clarity to make this glow effect softer. And for the same purpose, I'm going to bring down the dehaze, which really is kind of shaping the light in a very nice way on the left side. All right, that looks great. I'm quite happy with the left side for the moment. I'm going to apply a linear gradient on the far right side right here. And again, I want to bring down the whites to make this area just a bit darker. Perfect. I'm dropping the whites since again, if I would drop the exposure, there would just be under exposure introduced. And I don't think this would look good on that spot. Next up, there will be some more complicated masks applied. I want to target the mountain right here and make it darker. So I'm going to choose a luminance range mask first to target this mountain very, very roughly like this. It's actually looking pretty good already. And since I only want to target that mountain, I'm going to click on those three dots right here. And here we're choosing intersect mask width. And then let's grab a simple radial gradient. And I'm just trying to cover that mountain using the radial gradient. And thus we're getting a really good mask. Now to make that spot darker, I'm going to again, just drop the exposure slightly. And let's also drop the shadows. Perfect. Then I want to use another luminance range mask and just click on those clouds right here in the middle. I do think I need to adjust the luminance range. I want to cut out some of those midtones. All right, let's see how this works. Again, I only want to target a very specific area. So I'm going to click on the three dots again, choose intersect mask width and choose radial gradient. And now let's cover this part right here in the center. And on this part, I just want to slightly bring up the exposure, making the clouds brighter this way. Perfect. At this point, I think we could use some more glow. So again, let me create a radial gradient. I'm going to create a thin one like this and let's rotate it. I want to cover most of that mountain in the distance like that. And I'm going to bring up the blacks again to create this glow effect. And I'm going to use negative dehaze to make this stronger. Perfect. I want to use another radial gradient on the other mountain in the foreground. Again, I'm rotating it. I want to target the highlights on the mountain face like this. And I want to just make them more interesting. How can we do that? Simply by introducing some clarity. As you can see, this works really good. We can further emphasize this effect by bringing up the highlights. Actually, let's not do that. Okay. And finally, I do want to add one more radial gradient for a more intense light coming in from the left side, just like that. And I'm going to use this radial gradient and just bring up the exposure. Okay. Again, this will further increase the overexposure on the left. So let's say subtract, choose color range, and then I'm just clicking right in the white area going to bring down the refine slider to only really target the highlights. And that's looking really good this way. So I guess that's it for the masking. Let me turn off the masks so you can see the difference from before to after. As you can see, making use of some thoughtfully placed masks is very, very important to create epic scenes like this in Lightroom. It might be a little bit overwhelming, but if you get used to it, you can do some really, really cool things here. Now let's continue with a little bit of color grading. Yes, you heard correctly. We are going to color grade a black and white image. And I want to do that in the color grading tab. The reason here is I want to introduce some subtle blue tones to the midtones and the shadows because I personally just don't like the basic black and white look since 
it's just somehow too warm for me if that makes sense. So with the shadows let's bring up the hue to somewhere around here. Then I'm only going to add a really tiny amount of saturation which will give the overall shot a very subtle blue tint. We can make this effect stronger by going into the midtones and doing the same thing. Set up the hue and increase the amount of saturation just a tiny bit like that. Done. Not sure if you can see this due to a YouTube video compression, but let me deactivate the color grading for a moment. So we went from this to this. Then let's also add a bit of vignetting in the effects tab. So just bringing down the amount here. Okay. And I actually think I want to apply some other special effect. Let's open up the transform panel for that. What I want to do is to scale the mountains vertically to make them just a little more dramatic. So we can use that vertical slider right here, just stretch these mountains a bit. I think we can even go higher. This is looking much, much better. So before, after. Of course, we now need to crop the image a little further. So let's do that. I'm also going to rotate it a bit, take away a part from the right and the left, and that's it. All right, then the only thing that's left to do for this black and white scene is the sharpening. So let's go into the details tab. Here, as always, bring down the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking. So we only want to focus on those areas. You can hold on to Alt key to make this visible. Then I'm going to bring up the amount of sharpening like that. Done. And that's how you edit epic black and white scenes with Lightroom. I hope this was interesting and you were able to learn something new today. If you have any questions left, as always, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.